talk about a UPS. So what is a UPS and why should I even get one? So a UPS is a battery backup for your printer. These are commonly used for computers and they provide power for a limited amount of time during a power outage. I like using them for 3D printers because it solves one of the biggest problems with 3D printers and that is resuming a print that has been interrupted due to a power failure. Now unfortunately one of the drawbacks to FDM or additive manufacturing is resuming a print that has been interrupted due to either a power failure or something as simple as accidentally bumping the reset button which I've done in the past, I'm sure many of people have as well. With traditional CNC methods such as subtractive manufacturing, resuming from a power loss isn't really such a big deal, mostly for the fact that your G-code is split into multiple sections, you're not running one big file for the entire operation. So you have different G-code operations for different tools, different cut paths. It's usually split up into separate chunks. You're not running it all at once. And with subtractive manufacturing, if you do need to resume after, say, a power failure, for example, you can simply restart relatively close to it, and it'll just cut air until it catches up to where it previously was. With additive manufacturing, we don't have that option. You have to resume at the exact point of failure. If you start too soon, your nozzle will strike what is on the print bed. If you start too late, you will be printing in air. Now, currently there are several different methods of resuming a print from a power failure. The two most common ones involve either software or hardware implementations. The hardware implementation side is commonly used in Prusas and they have their power panic mode. In the event that the controller detects a power failure, it immediately turns off the bed, turns off the heater, saves where it's at in the G-code, and moves the head up slightly so that the tool head nozzle doesn't get stuck to the print as it cools down. So this method does work, however it does require that you have hardware that supports this function and Depending on what you are printing, you may not be able to resume. For example, if you're printing something such as ABS or an enclosed print that requires a consistent temperature, in the event that your power fails for too long, your print may pop off the bed, it may warp, it may delaminate, you may not be able to restart it from the exact same point, if at all. And the other method is via software, and how that works is it's constantly saving the G-code, basically doing a quick save after it finishes every line. Therefore, in the event of a power fail, you can resume from that previous point in the G-code through a new file. That method does have downsides for the fact that it's constantly writing to the SD card, so you can kill your SD card quicker than normal. And also, you're starting from the same line on the G-code, so you usually, with that method, I see that you have a line through the print, you usually are going to see the point that you resume the print. And that method does also have the downside where if your print cools down and pops off the bed or delamination or your chamber cools, depends on what material you're printing, you may not even be able to successfully resume. Another downside to both those options is you do need to rehome your printer before you can resume printing. Now, not all kinematics can do that and not all firmware support that function as you need to rehome your X and Y usually and then you also need to tell it what height your Z is at. Now, not all printers can accept G-code that will tell it where the Z is at. Depends how your firmware is set up, what firmware you're running, and how it's configured. And not all kinematics will allow you to do that. For example, if you require a probe of the bed before you print, such as on a Voron V2 to trim out the gantry to the bed, obviously you're not gonna be able to do that before resuming because you now have an object partially printed on the bed. So that brings me along to the method that I like to use on my printers that I rely on for production, and that is using a UPS. Now, a UPS is an uninterrupted power supply. These are commonly used for computers, and they provide consistent power in the event of a power loss. They do have batteries in them, and it will run your printer for a short amount of time, usually enough for the power to come back on. Most power outages, at least, again, it depends on where you live in the world, how your current power grid is. In my location, if the power does go out, it's usually for a flicker, it's usually a couple seconds. So this allows me to just keep on printing, and it's no issue. If the power goes out for a couple minutes or longer, they do make an audible beep, usually, and that can give you enough time to run down to your printer, turn the bed off, try and save the power a little bit more. Hopefully the power comes back on before the UPS runs out of power. Now, of course, the downside to relying solely on a UPS is if the power is out for a significant amount of time and the battery dies, of course, you're not going to be able to resume your print unless you have one of the previous methods mentioned. However, I find that if the power is out for such a short amount of time, odds are the UPS will be able to keep it going until it's back up. The majority of power outages that I suffer 
when they do happen are the very quick ones. And then also, I print a lot of ABS, so if the power is out for 10, 15, 20 minutes or longer, odds are my bed has cooled anyways, the parts have popped off the bed, and there's no point in trying to resume the print at that point anyways. Now when it comes to sizing a UPS, you are gonna want to get a bigger one. This is a 1000, um, you can get 1500 watt ones too, and this is a cyber power. Um, the bigger they are, the longer they will last. You don't want to get one that's too small because if your printer draws more power than these can output, they do get kind of cranky and you can prematurely kill them. They do have a shelf life. Eventually, after a couple of years, the batteries do run out, so you will have to replace the batteries eventually. However, for years of continuous printing in the event of a minor power failure, depending on where you live, you might save enough in terms of plastic or just time that it's worth investing in one of these. So what I'll do now is I'm going to get a print started and I'll show you what happens when the power goes out by unplugging it and how long this UPS will keep this printer running for. Now, now this is a Voron switch wire. It has a 24 volt DC bed, a 50 watt heater, and it's a pretty good analogy for the common uh, i3 style, Mendel style printer that's common out there. Okay, so we got our printer printing here. We're a couple layers in now. Everything's stabilized in terms of temperatures, the fans running. It'll basically run like this until the print is complete. Now another good thing on some UPSs, you also can get some readout information. This could be useful for tracking power usage, for example, you can see you know, current kilowatt output, how much power your printer is drawing, how many amps, etc. So that's just you know, some little information. You can't really trust the estimated runtime though because the power usage fluctuation changes. And with the printer running now, and of course it, it's just plugged into the UPS here, and the UPS is plugged into the wall. And now I'm going to unplug the UPS from the wall. So the printer will be solely running off of the UPS. And we'll see how long it lasts before it turns off. So three, two, one. And it's unplugged. And you will hear audible beeps. It means it is running off of the UPS. This is a warning to let you know that, hey, it's not getting power from the wall. And there we go. So we have just under seven and a half minutes of runtime on this battery. So as you can see, uh, we have just under seven and a half minutes of runtime. That's with a Cyber Bower 1000 on my switch wire. Now, depending on the size of the UPS, you'll get more or less runtime. The age of the UPS as well can factor in. This one's about a year and a half old now, so it probably has degraded a little bit, and I probably lost a little bit of runtime. And also the power draw of the printer will affect it as well. If you're running something small with unheated bed and a 30 watt heater, odds are you're gonna get much longer runtime than something with, say, a 50 watt heater, a chamber heater, a 1000 watt bed, and an enclosed printing peak. So you're gonna to have to take a look at what your requirements are and judge what size of UPS you're gonna need based on that. Now, with this size of UPS, I can run two printers off of it. However, if you are looking to run three or more, odds are you're gonna need multiple UPSs, as when they're all heating up at the same time, they do do quite a bit of power draw, and that can overload the UPS. If it starts beeping at you, odds are you don't have a large enough UPS to run multiple printers. Now, there is a cost investment. UPSs aren't cheap. Um, usually around 100 bucks, plus or minus 50, depending on where you live in the world. Uh, and if you get one on sale and the power size of one you get. So there is that you have to take into account. However, using this method, you can plug in any printer you have into it. And in my case here, as long as the power comes back on within about seven minutes, my printer will just continue printing like normal. As soon as the power comes back on, printer gets power, battery recharges, and you're good to go. For me, I print a lot of ABS and other materials that require enclosures. So if the power is out for seven to 10 minutes, usually at that point anyway, there's no point in resuming the print. Odds are my bed has cooled and the pots have popped off anyways. So I hope you have found this video informative. 
Right now I'm in the process of moving everything into the new printer room, so I have absolutely nothing set up right now. So I do apologize for the audio. I did as much as I can to try and cut down the echo, and it is recording directly off the camera here. So hopefully it wasn't too bad. If you do have any questions, again, please, as always, ask them in the comments below. If you'd like to see more content such as this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel as well, there's links below so you can do that. Thank you, and have a great day.